Hello creatures, my name's Chloe. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which I'm filming this video today. I would also like to acknowledge elders both past and present. I'm super excited because today I'm filming my Charlotte Holmes reading vlog. I started reading this series a couple of years ago when Blonde with a Book, Rocky, she kept talking about it. It sounded fantastic. I love Sherlock Holmes. So I read it. I read it and I loved it so much. It was fantastic. I very, very quickly read the second and third books in the series. It was the end of 2018, I think, when I read the third book in the series, which is right when it came out. I've been waiting for the last book to come out and now I have it. So it came out. It took ages for my library to get it in, but we finally have it. So I figured I would do a reading vlog. I wanted to reread all the books. So that's what I'm going to do. I've, I do want to get my own copies of these at some stage. Brilliant Books in the United States have a service where you can get signed by the author. I don't know if Brittany Caballaro is still doing that partnership with them, but I really hope she is because I desperately want to get a signed set of these books. I love them. They've got beautiful covers, as you can see here, and they're just fantastic. So the plan was originally I was going to try and read all the books in one day, but it's already mid-afternoon. I've had a lot more on this week than... I was thought I was going to and I really really want to read these so I'm just going to get started and this will probably take me more than one day but I don't care because I just want to get going. So I'm going to be reading A Study in Charlotte and then maybe I'll have time to start the last of August which I don't, it's so hard for me to decide which cover's my favourite but I really like the colours in the first two books and the last of August is such a pretty green but yeah I'm hoping to get to this one today but for now we're going to get started with Charlotte. <music> It's still five stars. It's still one of my favourite books of all time. I love it so much. Brittany Cavallaro has a really good way of, I don't know, sometimes when she writes the characters have conversations and at first you can't tell why they've said something but it still makes perfect sense for their character. She gets atmosphere and feeling really really well even if when you're actually reading it at first you go, what, what did I miss? You haven't missed anything it's that emotional jump that's entirely realistic and that's what I really like about this book. Oh, I, do, I just I love Charlotte so much she's acerbic and sharp and witty and she is everything that I think a sort of feminine descendant of Sherlock Holmes would be and I love her and Jamie Watson I think because you get so this whole book is Jamie's perspective but in the last chapter you get Charlotte's and I think in that last chapter you can really see the contrast between how they see each other and you have a really good sense of that all through the book. So even when Jamie doesn't think of himself in a certain way, you can see how he'd be perceived by other people. I just think these books are a study in perception and character development and emotion. I just love them. Emotion is something I really want to get better at in my own writing and... A Study in Charlotte is the perfect example of that kind of growth that I'm looking for. So that was fantastic. I'm not going to be able to read another one today, even though I really want to. I may start the last of August. We'll see, but I'm not sure yet. I don't know if I'm going to the gym later today or not. I may just do some uni work. I feel like I've got a lot to catch up on this week. I might. I, I don't know. I'll just, I'll have to see. This was fantastic. Five stars as always. Okay, guys. It's Friday. It's the 4th of September. I haven't read any more of the Study in Charlotte series because I'm committed to vlogging as much as I possibly can and I just haven't been able to do that the last couple of days. So, 
what I'm going to do right now is I do want to get a little tiny bit of The Last of August done today if I can. So what we're going to do, I'm going to watch a little bit of YouTube because I haven't been doing that very much. I'm, my wardrobe is open because I have to go to an engagement party on Saturday night. For people I've never met, they're my partner's friends. So I'm going to pick out my clothes, get my stuff ready so that I can go when I need to because I don't know what time I'm leaving the house today. And then I'm going to try and get some reading done. So that's the plan. <music> As much as I really want to get the last of August finished, I don't think I'm going to be able to read it very much over the weekend, or at least tonight, which is Friday, and then tomorrow, which is Saturday, because I think I'm going to be studying most of tomorrow, but even so, I'm going to be reading European Travels for Mon Monstrous Gentlewomen instead. I'm 50 pages in and loving it. I had no idea it was like 600 pages long, but that's okay. I will deal. I'm kind of doing this thing, I'm going to try and for every book that I read I get to pick one up from the library. So at the moment I think I have Study in Charlotte, The Last of August, Case for Jamie, A Question of Homes, Priory of the Orange Tree, A Firefly Book, Tunnel of Bones by V. Schwab, this one. Yeah, so I've got eight books out at the moment so I'm going to try and keep it at just eight and hopefully get that lower. So say I return two books I can still only get one out unless there's a cluster that I really want to read at the time because it's getting out of control again so I get out a lot of library books and I get too many at once and I can't renew them so I have to return too many so I need to keep my numbers more limited. But I'm really loving this already even though I'm only 50 pages in but my library doesn't have the third book so I really need to make sure I request that soon. So this is what I'm going to be taking with me which will go in my primary bag which is my handbag. So I think I'm basically ready to go which means I can or I can go and start doing some uni work slash last of August which I might read a little bit of. I might read for like 15 minutes and then I'll do some uni work. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Monday the 7th of September and I finished the last of August yesterday. It was really really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it as always. Five out of five stars. I had actually forgotten that the last of August is the first time we hear Charlotte as the narrator. She narrates one chapter late in the book and I'd forgotten how much I love her voice in comparison to Jamie's almost. I really like how Jamie is portrayed but also I'm really interested in Charlotte's voice, so I found it really enjoyable to be in her head. I would actually love a version of the series where we hear her all the time, like you swap their narration. So she tells the story and where her chapter comes in in this, that's when you get Jamie. It probably wouldn't have as much impact as how Brittany Cavallaro has done it, but I really like the idea of it all the same. This book is mainly set in Berlin, which I'd forgotten. I recently said I read The October Man and in my August wrap-up, I said that that was the first book that I'd read that was set in Germany, which apparently not true because this was. I really enjoyed it. I don't think I got as much of a feel for what Germany is as much as I did have for the first book. I had a really strong idea of that setting in the school, but... That's not to say that the writing still wasn't good. You got an atmosphere. It was kind of the atmosphere you get from the David Bowie albums that were written and recorded in Berlin. That's what it reminded me of anyway. It's very much set in the art world. This goes a bit more into Charlotte's family too, which I really like. Her family are a bit not good. We see a lot more of Milo, her brother though, which was interesting. He's based on Mycroft, obviously. And then we have Alastair and Emma, who are their parents. I think I prefer the first book to this one, just because you see Jamie and Charlotte's relationship developing, where in this one we see them struggling to sort of understand what they are to each other now that they're not sort of 
like staving off death and stuff, which is really interesting. The light's so weird. So if I hold it like this, then it goes super dark. But if I hold it like that, it lightens up. Let's just... But it was really, really good. I, I loved it. Like I always love it. So this means I'm officially halfway through my reread, which is fantastic. I am hoping to finish off both The Case for Jamie and A Question of Homes in the next couple of days because I really want to get these done. I want to return them. I want to get on to some other books that I have waiting. Not that I'm in a hurry to finish. I just, I'm really excited for the last book and I haven't had as much time to read these as I wanted. So it'll be really good once I actually have a chance to do that. So the plan is I've done a few, I've done a few hours of uni. I've done some thesis writing. We're really getting down to the wire with that now. So I'm starting to get a little bit concerned that I have too much to do and not enough time to do it in, but it should be okay. So I'm going to let myself read The Case for Jamie for a while, I don't know how long, maybe a half an hour or an hour, and then I'm going to see where I'm at after that. Very excited. A Case for Jamie from memory has a lot more of Charlotte's voice in it. I think it's a lot more 50-50, which will be great. Okay, I'm on page 27 and I'd completely forgotten there's a reference in this to Star Trek Next Gen, specifically Charlotte really likes Data, who is also probably my favourite character out of Next Gen, just makes me happy. I love little references in books, particularly to things that I like, so this one was kind of cute. And Star Trek doesn't come up as much as I would expect, to be honest. Like, it's been a fairly massive show for a really long time. And I get that it's maybe not as popular now, like the series that are coming out aren't as huge, but it's still fairly prominent, I, th I thought. So yeah, I just really like it and I love the idea of Charlotte Holmes watching Star Trek Next Gen. <laughs> guys it's Tuesday the 8th I finished the case for Jamie last night and I realized this book is probably the one that makes me most uncomfortable in the series just because I think you see a lot more of the inner turmoil of the characters in this one than you do in the previous two books and Jamie and Charlotte spend most of this book apart which I actually didn't mind I think it kind of annoyed me the first time I read it but this time I really enjoyed their development I enjoyed Charlotte's sections a lot more than Jamie's I, d I just didn't care for Jamie's storyline as much however I thought this book did a really really good job of portraying exactly what was happening to Jamie you see him struggling with everything that happened in the previous book which is understandable because the last book was hectic he's not diagnosed with it but it's mentioned several times on page or suggested to him that he suffers from PTSD which I found the portrayal of his PTSD fairly realistic it was very subtly woven in there was a lot about how Jamie doesn't appear to he's not engaging with his life like he used to and his friends mention it to him he's not left to flounder in the same way that he could have been which I really appreciated his and Charlotte's reunion was fantastic as it always is it's probably one of my favorite parts of this book I do wish there was more fleshed out about Jamie's relationship with his mother I'm going to put a spoiler warning on this vlog because spoilers obviously but in this book his mother ends up married to a Moriarty and she doesn't know and he and Jamie get in a fist fight and Jamie's mum sort of blames him for the whole situation which I am hoping will be gone more into detail in A Question of Homes because it does come right at the end of the book but I just really want to get more into their relationship because the other thing she does she lets Lucian the, the Moriarty she marries convince her to send her daughter away to boarding school in the wilderness and he frames her he frames the daughter for being an addict he puts a bottle of vodka in her drawer and her mum doesn't believe her and her mum gets really caught up in this relationship and I was just thinking it'd be really cool if that was explored some more but I don't think it will be. Jamie's relationship with his dad is much more prominent in the books because 
he moves to America and his dad lives in America, his mum lives in England. So this is really interesting. I don't know. I, I, I do want to see more of that. This was five out of five, obviously. All these books are. I'm fully expecting Question of Homes will be no different. Um, what else did I think about this book? Oh, that's it. It does a really good job of unpacking Jamie and Charlotte's really unhealthy dynamic. It, it sort of unravels how and why they are bad for each other, but also why they can't really live without each other, which I loved. I really like the sort of character development that's in these books. It's so subtle and so clever. I just love it and I'd really like to be able to do something similar in my own books. It, it would be fantastic, but I don't think I will necessarily be able to. It's just, it makes me really happy. So now what I'm going to do, I've done all of my uni work for the morning, which I'm really happy about. I have a small to-do list, which eh, you can see here. It's very, very small and half of that is for tomorrow. I've uploaded a video, which is part of what I had to do today. I've revised three pages of my second chapter of my thesis and I wrote 500 words of my third chapter. And the last thing on my list is to read A Question of Holmes. And hopefully get this done. I, I don't know if I can finish this whole book before I have to leave for work. I'm not looking at the back of the book, I swear. I'm just checking the page number. 287 pages and I have to leave in about two hours. I probably won't be able to get all of that done, but I should be able to get a fair bit of it done, which would be lovely. But we will see. I am really, really wanting to finish this today. I might take it with me on the bus and read it then. But I do also have a couple of other books that I was planning on reading, so we'll have to see. Okay, I think that's all. I think I'm just going to go and get started on this now. I'm really, really happy. And I did have another idea for another video to do with this series, but I don't know when it'll be out. But I'm really, really excited about it, and I'm really happy that I've come up with some new video ideas because I was running a little bit low. So that will be coming at some stage. Super excited. I'm going to go and read this now. <laughs> pages in and my laptop's nearly flat. I might read a little bit more before I leave to go to work, which I'm doing in 20 minutes or so, but so far it's really, really good. It's very different to the previous three books. It's a little quieter, but I'm really, really liking it. I don't think I'll take it with me on the bus. I think I'll just finish it tomorrow, but I'm really liking it. Okay, so it's the 9th. I'm nearly finished. I've got, I'm on a page 187, so I've got... I've got exactly 100 pages left. So I'm going to finish this before I do any uni today because I really want to get this done and I want to finish this vlog off. So that's what I'm going to do. Hello creatures, I finished A Question of Homes. So as you may be able to tell, I'm getting ready to go out. I have to leave very, very soon. So I'm going to pack all my stuff for work and for the gym while I do this. So this is actually the second time I'm filming this whole thing because my computer was full and I didn't realize when I filmed my vlogging footage from this morning when I actually finished a question of homes and when I recorded my mini review of it. I'm really annoyed about that not just because I've had to do this again but because I was quite emotional about the end and I feel like my thoughts were a lot more cohesive than probably they are now because there's so much to reflect on but suffice to say I loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It made me really happy. Like, I think it's almost my favourite of the books. And, like, they're all my favourites for different reasons. So, in the, f the first one, we get their meeting, we get the outline of their relationship and what they'll become to each other, and that picture is really clear. I'm taking European Travels for Monstrous Gentlewomen with me today, just if you're interested. 
And then in the second book we get to see them grow more as people and sort of the edges of their relationship starts to change, which I really love. But then the third book we see them separated and they're, they're growing as different people and they're dealing with the trauma of the previous two books. And then we get this one, which honestly the series feels like it's a trilogy with this being the follow-up book. Because this is the only one. We don't have Moriarty sort of controlling everything and puppeteering everything. They're not the source of the mystery. Holmes and Watson are in London this time. They're not in Berlin or back in the States. So we get a very, very different picture of them than what we've seen so far. And we get them actually entering their relationship properly and trying to figure out who they are when they're not dying or nearly dying. And Charlotte is learning how to how to kind of be a real person, not just she wants to learn how to be Charlotte, not a Holmes, which I loved. I loved her whole story arc in this. I have talked already about how the books change with their perspectives. This whole book is Charlotte's perspective except the epilogue. We get that from Jamie's perspective. And honestly that is my favourite format we've had so far. Now as far as the ending goes, now this is where the big spoilers are so don't, really don't watch this if you don't want to be spoiled but if you've gotten this far I assume you're fine with it. Charlotte decides she has to leave. She has to leave Jamie to then figure out who she is and she's going to come back. The epilogue is set two years after she's made that decision and she's been back for a few months I think. I'm a bit iffy on the timeline. I'll have to thumb through it again and check but they're not together yet. They're taking cases. She's changed her name to Doyle instead of Holmes which I really like that little nod to Arthur Conan Doyle. In this series he's John Watson's literary agent rather than the writer which I thought was a really cool way to still keep him incorporated. But she's changed her name, she's taking cases and she's helping mainly girls with problems that they can't take to anybody else. She's not doing cases that the police would do. And the last thing we see is her asking Watson to give them a chance and to try living together and being what they were to each other, which I just loved. It was fantastic. I do need to sort through my thoughts on it more, but it, it was really wonderful. I just, I love this series so much. I do need to read Hello Girls, which is Brittany Caballaro's other release, which she co-wrote with somebody, but I can't remember who that is right now. But I really don't know how it could compare to this. It's one of my favourite series of all time. I'm going to leave this there because I do have to go and I've got a couple of things to do very, very quickly before I leave. Please comment down below what you think of this series. I'm really, really open to chatting about this on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever. Please feel free to reach out. I really want to talk about this with somebody. And I want to say thank you to Blonde with a Book, also known as Rocky, because I wouldn't have read this series without her. All of this is entirely up to her and I'm very, very grateful. Subscribe if you want to, like it if you did, and I will see you soon in my next video.